Butter my bread, butter my bread. All right, there's some banana bread with butter on it. It is amazing, and a couple people have asked me what I eat in a day, and so I think tomorrow's vlog, Saturday, well, when you're watching it, it'll be Sunday, uh, I'm gonna show you what I eat in a day, and yeah, just walk you through what I like to eat and what I feel like gives me good, solid energy for running lots of mountains, lots of miles. All right, throwing you a curveball out of the gate. Here we go. Question of the day. Usually I save it for later in the vlog. Here we go. Did you race today uh, or did you do a long run today? If so, either one. How did it go? What did you do? What did you race? Where did you race? Tell us the story. Uh, it's the weekend. It's slowly turning into racing season because it's getting warmer, at least in North America. But if you're in, uh, if you're down in the Southern Hemisphere, let us know as well. Like what races are happening down there in the Southern Hemisphere as well. All right, that's the question of the day. I'm headed to the mountains, get some vert, get some uh, red blood cell recruitment on, and then uh, I got to zip, uh, zip all around today. So, woo! Mm, mm, mm. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Woo! All right, made it to the turnaround point, seven and a half miles, and uh, up the Mount Evans Road. I can kind of see the mountain over there, but uh, anyway, I did, uh, this hasn't happened in a long time, but I was chased by dogs, and that's never fun, right? You never want to be chased by dogs on a run, so I have to go back by the dogs. So we're gonna see how this turns out. Uh, they weren't that fast, thankfully. I could outrun them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's never fun to be chased by dogs. Whoa, look at this cliff. Holy smokes. Oh boy. Dog chasing me. Cars. Don't hit the dog. Holy shnikes. Oh. One of my favorite places to run in the entire world is down at a main street. And we've got some really good main streets in uh, Colorado. Anyway, it's one of my favorite places to run. So much to look at. What's up? <laughs> Let's do this. And we made it off the mountain. Solid run, 14 miles, 22 kilometers. Solid day, but guess what? I'm pretty darn tired. I haven't been this tired probably since last August when I was training for the 100 mile race. And uh, so today we're talking about how to deal with tired legs as a runner. And listen, we've, we've dabbled in this topic before. About two weeks ago, made another vlog. Go check it out, upper right hand corner. It's called How I Recover as a Runner, Easy Days. If you're new to running and you're like, you're starting to hurt a little bit, your volume is going up with the weather getting nicer and nicer, usually you start running a little bit more. You might want to go watch it, upper right hand corner. Oh man, what a day. Thankfully, it's the weekend. All right, let's go. Let's go to the pool. And here we go. 
So we're tired out in the studio. And yes, we're talking about how to overcome tired runner's legs on the run in the gym and at your house, all right? So first of all, why am I tired? Let me just break down the week for you. We are currently sitting, I'm currently sitting, but we, because we're on this journey together, currently sitting at 75 miles for the week. So solid week of volume, uh, 15 miles on Monday, 11 on Tuesday, uh, 15 on Wednesday, uh, 20 on Thursday, my long run, and then 14 today on a Friday, but, what set up my legs for a challenging week, and I wanted a challenging week, I knew that. Why? Because at the beginning of the week, I was nine, I was basically nine weeks out from the marathon, and yes, I am very, I'm monitoring very closely my overall training block in my calendar, just remembering like, how do my legs feel now, and how do I want them to feel in three weeks from now, in five weeks from now, and yes, in eight weeks from now, right before the marathon. And so the game plan for the overall training block is setting up nicely with eight weeks to go. Uh, this is the first moment in this training block since January 1st. First steps of 2019. <laughs> that my legs are actually starting to tell me, okay, this is, this is good. I can feel this, I'm a little tired. All right, now let's dive into a couple strategies and tips for dealing with tired legs on your run. Strategy number one, go slower. Just go slower, it's okay. Just run slower. Even, you might even have to cut a workout, like an interval workout or a, or a tempo run out of your schedule and just go out and run. There's no reason to dig a hole. Because once you start digging a hole into overtraining syndrome, OTS, and that's like, a, OTS is, is pretty serious. Um, you're probably not dealing with OTS. Uh, hopefully you never have to deal with it, but sometimes athletes can get into the mindset that I have to do this workout. I have to, I, I've, I'm the first uh, guilty person in the room for doing that in the past, but I've learned over time it's more beneficial more beneficial, don't don't go into the OTS. Don't dig yourself a deep hole that you can't come out of. Rather, go slower, maybe shorten your distance up a little bit on your run, and guess what? Hit the reset button, because guess what? The sun will rise tomorrow, it's okay. Listen, if you're sitting on your couch, and then you go out your door, and you're running 10 minutes per mile, do you think your heart rate is gonna be uh, lower out there running 10 minutes per mile compared to when you're sitting on the couch? No, no it is not. It's gonna be higher, because guess what? At 10 minutes per mile, you're still giving your heart, your, uh, your, your, your respiratory system, all of that good stuff, you're still giving it an aerobic stimulus no matter how slow you're going, even if you're walking. How brilliant is that? How brilliant is that? So don't be afraid to slow the pace down and even shorten the pace just a little bit. Okay, moving on to tip number two for on your run. Shorten your stride a little bit. So what did I do today? I was tired and usually when you're tired, it's a little harder to drive your knee because you're tired and it's a little harder to, to extend your leg out and get that nice full uh, gait cycle for your running stride, your natural best running stride. Therefore, what I do, instead of extending my leg or driving the knee more than I really feel like doing on that day because I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm overstressing the body just a little too much, I focus, on, rather than doing that, I focus on foot strike and foot speed. So in order to keep my pace up just a little bit, like at the pace, the goal pace for the day, I'll focus on brrr, moving my feet just a little faster. So keeping those RPMs up. How many times per minute does your foot strike the ground? And by doing that, usually my stride is just a little shorter, but my, my RPMs are just moving just a smidge faster, all right? So that's my strategy for saving my legs a little bit, but still getting that pace in that I want to hit for the day. And that's what I was doing today up, uh, up the Mount Evans Road. And again, upper right hand corner for that vlog all about that full recovery easy day in the gym. Go watch that. I go into much more detail. Very briefly, I go to the pool. I hit the foam roller real good. Today I was on it for, oh man, at least 10 minutes. I may have been on the foam roller for 15 minutes today. It was amazing. So pool, foam roller, 
extensive stretching. Uh, oh, stretching the calves, so nice. And then I jump back in the sauna or a hot tub for just like five to 10 minutes. I don't know what it is, it might be mental, but getting that, um, that, uh, that heat into my legs, like it just feels so good and relaxes the muscles real nice. Uh, and again, you don't need much, five to 10 minutes is what I do. And then no plyos, no lifting. So that's what I did today. So that's how I deal with tired legs in the gym. And oh, foam roller is your best friend for tired legs. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And moving on to how to deal with tired legs at your house, in your home, Epsom salt baths. I, I mean, Gosh, it's probably two to three times a week I'm taking an Epsom salt bath just to help ease those aches and pains. Love this stuff. Okay, also uh, self-massage after the Epsom salt bath. I'm really loving, just so you know, I just started using this stuff, when was it? Last week? Yeah, last week, this deep blue rub. And listen, I'm not a doctor, so you gotta read the active ingredients, but so far I'm really enjoying it. And you can use all sorts, as I have many other creams inside, but basically this helps relieve soreness. And what I do is I massage my legs with this stuff on my hand, and it's kind of like an icy hot. You've probably smelled icy hot before. It, this is called Deep Blue Rub, and so far I'm really enjoying it. I need to keep testing it and using it uh, before a full endorsement, but thus far so good for self massage at, at self massage at your house and then the good old foot log for the feet yes they are part of your legs the whole chain the whole kinetic chain uh this is for massaging your feet if you've been watching for a long time you know that this guy is my best friend just to relieve some of the pressure points on your feet after a big week of training so this is called the foot log and yes, uh, as a father, I do need to remain active playing with those boys in there. They've got a lot of energy, so good old Nerf gun war. Never hurt anybody, but also after 10 to 15 minutes of Nerf guns, I'm like, hey, boys, let's read a book. So one of my strategies for helping tired legs and this is so basic, so simple, but some of us runners have a hard time sitting still and not doing anything. I would really strongly recommend picking up a book really trying to elevate your legs okay so i have the lazy boy there i would even like lay on a couch and then put your legs up on the uh on the the armrest and just let your legs if you can do a half hour of no moving and just elevate your legs a little bit i'm telling you it'll make it it helps me so so much. i feel so refreshed after doing that it's crazy and even on the weekends i'll shoot for like 45 minutes to an hour where i'll just tell the boys like boys Hand me a Nerf gun, I'll play from here. You guys just go run around the house. I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you from here. And there you have it. That is how I deal with tired legs. Run a little slower, hit the foam roller, hit it good, man. And then uh, get off your feet and elevate your legs. Uh, don't be afraid to, you know, invest in, maybe not, maybe it's not deep blue rub. Maybe you find something else that you like, but just to get that uh, massaging going on your legs, I'm telling you, it really, it's a, such a small thing. And it's like the little things in, in the running world and frankly in life that make the big difference. You know that. Okay. Tired is the key word, and I already asked the question of the day about how was your race this weekend, how was your long run, but maybe you can also let us know, did you did it make your legs tired? Because if it did, that's good, because that's what we do as runners. We make ourselves tired. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for being here. Again, tomorrow the game plan is to uh, go through all that I eat in a day. I'm just going to film what I eat, and we'll see what I end up eating. Sound good? Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Sweet them all. Ooh, I can already smell the bacon right now. <laughs>